Hey, what is going on everybody? James here, your ABX audio file. Today, we're gonna be talking about a gentleman by the name of Peja out of Serbia, who is creating and building some very, very boutique and beautiful uh, products, specifically uh, the A21 integrated amplifier. Absolute stunner for the money. You're gonna wanna stick around and hear all about this. All right, so if you have not heard of Audio, go to their website. We'll check it out here in just a couple seconds. I'll kind of run you through some of their products, but they make some really, really high-end custom uh, integrated amplifiers and DACs. Uh, one of the individuals, Steve Z, uh, in our Discord was speaking really highly of the Audio A21 as really a good reference solid-state amplifier uh, to really kind of compare some higher-end gear to. Uh, as you all know, I really kind of lean toward tubes. I think in my reference system, uh, I've been running the Prima Luna Dialog Premium with some, some upgraded tubes in there, uh, and that's kind of become my reference. So anytime I audition kind of solid-state amplifiers uh, or integrated amplifiers, I'm always like referencing them back to the Prima Luna, which really isn't fair. Uh, so I've been kind of on the hunt for a solid state amplifier that we can kind of nestle in the system and use so that when we uh, audition other solid state gear, we can kind of have a, a reference point. So that's what the Audio A21 has become for me. Uh, and we're kind of digging into the Orchard Audio stuff. We've done some of the Emotiva, you know, top tier, uh, fully differential amplifiers. Um, and so, so I really wanted this A21 to kind of become what we are comparing everything else to. If you've not seen uh, my review on the Emotiva DR2, go check it out and keep uh, keep your eye open and the notifications on our YouTube uh, because we've got all of the Orchard Audio stuff in uh, and we've been running it through its paces. Um, and you'll kind of notice a little shift in our page. I think we're kind of leaning a little bit towards some of these boutique things. And so when Steve told me about the Audio A21 and what Peja was doing over there in, in Serbia and the quality of this thing, uh, it was a no-brainer. So I actually purchased this unit used from Steve uh, so this was not sent to us by any reviewers. Um, Peja knows that we're reviewing it, uh, but more just because I reached out to him specifically and said, "Hey, man, we really love your project, you know, product here. I just want you to know that I'm, you know, going to do a review on it, and you know, I appreciate what you're doing." And and so um, that's what we got. Uh, it is a hundred watt, fully differential, uh, balanced, integrated amplifier, Class A B. Uh, absolutely phenomenal build. This thing is super, super heavy. Uh, let's take a look at the actual unit and I will show you guys the format, the layout, the structure, what the front and the back looks like. You can kind of see it to the side of me here. Uh, let's get a closer look and dive into this thing a little bit. Okay, so here we have the Audio A21, the front display. You can see very, very simple, clean layout. I'm telling you, this thing is absolutely beautiful in person. This top almost has kind of a... a a white pearlescent sheen to it. It is really, really beautiful when you get it put in the rack. Beautiful aluminum front plate here. Uh, super, super thick. We're probably a little over a quarter inch, maybe three eighths here. Nice bull nose rounded edges on this thing. Uh, the power button, this is one of my favorite things. It's a nice little push, but it is super, super solid. I think that's one of my favorite things. It just feels really, really good. Uh, nice uh, ring around the power button, very firm to the push. Uh, it sets really good, uh, good depth to it. Uh, we've got a simple display here on the front. Uh, shows your different inputs. Here's your pickup for your remote. You can see the remote here if you do choose that as an option. Uh, and then we've got a simple uh, volume knob here that is kind of chrome to the touch. And you can see as we turn it, it's it feels pretty substantial. It's a little bit lighter than I think I would like, but uh, it works It works really well. I don't feel like it's chintzy. Uh, you can see that we go up and down in DB there, um, all the way down to mute. Uh, the nice thing about this is the, the uh, volume knob is integrated with the input. So this thing has five inputs. We'll get to the back here in just a minute. So if you push this in, you can see and hear audibly that we are changing inputs. So one through five, super simple. Uh, volume knob, input selector, uh, nice little uh, display here. Just a really clean look with the Audio A21 uh, logo and label down there. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Let's take a look at the back. Okay, so here we see the back of the unit. Uh, you know, again, the same kind of material as the top. All these little beautiful screws. I mean, everything is just labeled out super nice. You can see the huge copper heat sink on the other side of these, uh, these binding posts here. 
This is all 100% copper. I'll show you guys some pictures on this, but these are absolutely beautiful. 100% pure copper. Uh, you know, they unscrew, uh, so you can put your, your uh, bananas in there. You can put your prongs in there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful binding post. Massive heat sink in the back behind this thing. Uh, we've got our array of RCA inputs here. Uh, they give you a ground as well. Uh, I could not find anything that says it has a phono stage. So I think this ground is specifically just for if you want to ground the thing. Uh, just standard RCA single-ended inputs here. Uh, nice little array of them. Uh, this is your input one, two, and three. Uh, then we mo move over into our fully balanced uh, differential uh, in uh, inputs here. So you've got two sets uh, of XLR inputs with the little release knobs there. Really, really nice. This does have a preamp out, so we will talk about how we can use this just as a preamplifier and bypass the amplifier inside. Uh, although talking with Peja over at uh, Audio, uh, he doesn't really recommend it. These are more, in his description, designed to be used as, as sub outs uh, for this integrated amplifier, and we did use it in that configuration. We'll talk about that too, uh, but this is the back of the piece, beautiful piece, and it is I mean, there's some weight to it. That thing is heavy. Nice little feet on the bottom. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to hold that thing in the air. So those those transformers in there whew, are substantial. So anyway, that's the back pan. Okay, so the Audio A21 sound. I was really looking for something like I talked about earlier as, as a reference solid state. So comparing um, the sound of the Audio A21 to some similar priced um, units, you know, we could take a look at the, we just got done reviewing the Emotiva uh, DR2, another fully differential setup amplifier. Um, and then as well, the uh, Orchard Audio uh, Star Crimson Ultra. Uh, and the differences here in my experience was the audio to me is more of an audiophile analog sound. I didn't find it to be laser beam focused, uh, ultra precise, like kind of the Star Crimson Ultra was. That thing is like a Ginsu knife. Uh, the Audio A21 is much more overall a relaxed presentation compared to the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Ultra, which is like another thousand dollars, I think. Um, but more closely, the Emotiva DR2. Now, the Emotiva DR2 uh, is a powerhouse that does bass insanely well, but it really kind of gets glary and uh, a little bit overwhelming in, in some of your higher end frequencies, um, you know, when you're kind of using it in a musical application. As I said in my review, I felt like the Emotiva DR2 was a little better suited for home theater rather than, you know, audiophile, critical musical listening. That's where this Audio A21 came in for me. When I plugged this thing into my system, overall, it was just like, this is what I've been looking for in a solid state amplifier. I didn't completely miss my Prima Luna and that tube thing that it gives you. The Audio A21 is a very, very musical amplifier. Uh, it has a nice sweetness on the top end, uh, a nice bass that isn't super punchy or impactful. It's, it's, it's a little bit, I would say, looser. Um, but I kind of prefer that. It's more inviting. It's, it's more of a, I'm not going to say this is a warm uh, soundstage. Uh, images really, really well. The, the, the images within the soundstage were focused and detailed enough for me. Uh, there was substantial layering in between things. I didn't feel like I was losing my soundstage. A lot of times when I switched to that solid state, you know, you kind of vaporize that soundstage a little bit. Uh, and, and this was minimal in that aspect. I really felt like, damn, this is really, really what I wish that solid state would kind of sound like. So, um, you know, mid ranges, vocals, uh, you know, transients, uh, you know, the ability for this thing with those big Toyota transformers and how he's got this thing built. Um, you know, I didn't find it uh, slow sounding or weak in the dynamic swing and, and, the, and the transients and how it handled those, you know, mouse quiet uh, you know, mouse walking across the sound stage to a huge cymbal crash at 100 dB and, and moving around. I, I didn't feel like it was super lacking there. It wasn't as near uh, as quick on the dynamics and transient space as the State of Star Crimson Ultra was from Orchard Audio. But 
kind of thinking in the space of different tools for different things, right? This Audio A21 will pair very well with highly sensitive speakers like the Clips Fortes, uh, the open baffles that we're doing in our in our group. Uh, beautiful, beautiful pairing there. Uh, we did put the Mark Audio Sesti Ts, uh, the towers, which you see right behind me here, uh, on it as well. Great performer. Gave all of the Mark Audio love through those drivers. Held all of those full range drivers really good. Um, and then we put the Dyn Audios on it, the Emmet Fifties. You know, put something a little lower in sensitivity. I think the Dyn Audio Emmet Fifties come in at like 83 or 84 dB sensitivity. So they really, really like a lot of power. Uh, and they did shine on the uh, Emotiva DR2. They kind of rolled off that sibilance a little bit, that kind of graininess in that upper frequency range. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, the audio is only 100 watts. And let's see how it handles those Dyn audios. And it did beautifully. I mean, I, obviously I had to turn the volume up substantially more compared to like the 99, 101 dB sensitive Clip Fortes. Um, but man, it was really getting that bass going. All the things that you would think of that come from that, uh, that Dyn audio, you know, they really shine in that bass region. And so it held that really well. Again, not as tight, not as slappy, focused, detailed bass as I've heard in other amplifiers. Um, but I liked it. It was very inviting. It's, it's, a, it's an amplifier that you can sit and listen to for long periods of time, uh, even on kind of more fatiguing speakers, say like the Clips Fortes, uh, and not really kind of get into that space. Uh, I would say it performs middle road, upper middle road, kind of as it comes to like naturalness and realness. I've heard a lot more real and natural sounding amplifiers, especially when you get into like the tube space, Prima Luna Dialog Premium, uh, Wilsonton R8, some of those things, you kind of get this a little bit better chance at some real natural sounding stuff. Uh, and typically kind of when I move to solid state, I always find, not always, but for the most part, I find that that gets cut down a little bit. I lose a little bit of that realness and naturalness and invitingness for accuracy, detail, punch, and focus, right? And so the Audio A21 for me was a great space. I felt it like went right in the middle. You know, if you take the the accurate, dynamic, punchy, solid state amplifiers and you take the Prima Luna Dialog Premium, you know, the Wilsonton R8, some of those kind of higher output tube amplifiers, I would slide this guy like right in the middle. Um, I don't think it will leave you lacking in either space. Um, so that's kind of the overall sound. Uh, like I said, the bass was was good. You know, listening to our, um, you know, make us stronger and and uh, you know some of our other reference tracks that we t we talk about all the time in our reviews. I, I wasn't, I didn't feel like the bass was lacking. I felt that it was tight and punchy enough with just enough relaxation that it was, you know. Kind of soothing, you know. It, it was it was good. Uh, the mid range vocals uh, again, not as real and precise and on point as I would would hear in some other areas, uh, but also not really kind of like um, laid back or diffused. I felt the vocals were real enough, natural enough for me. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel anything lacking in that space. Uh, in the treble region, when we get up to those higher frequencies, uh, the thing about the audio for me is it eliminated a lot of the sibilance um, and graininess and kind of kind of um, tension that I get with something like the Emotiva DR2. Uh, I think this thing was specifically designed to be very musical in nature and maintain uh, as much of that punch and tightness and accuracy as possible without losing that musicality. Uh, and I'd have to sit down with Peja and have a beer and, and see if that was his actual intention. Um, but that's kind of what I got from this, this amplifier. So if you're looking for something solid state wise uh, that puts you in the $2,500 range uh, that will scale with a multitude of, of gear, uh, the Audio A21 I think is something that you should really look at. And not only that, but we're supporting a small company, uh, handmade, absolute craftsman, um, you know, and I really think some of these boutique spaces like Orchard Audio, uh, Audio, um, you know, Paige's deal he's doing over there, I think we can find some really magical stuff here. And I'm going to keep digging into this, uh, these boutique companies. I'm, I'm kind of going to lean away from the mainstream commercial retailers. I think you guys can find plenty of reviews on that stuff. And, uh, you know, we may be able to do something different. Let's take a look at the remote. You saw the remote when I was kind of uh, um, showing you the front and the back. So here's the remote here. Let's let this guy focus in. Uh, beautiful, all wood, 
Uh, he kind of splits it up into sections. So you'll see here's your input selector, volume up or down and channel. Uh, you know, we got some different, you know, depending on what channel you're on, your menu, start and stop. So this will integrate with some other units. Uh, it is an option though. It doesn't come with the uh, unit itself. So you have to kind of choose this, uh, but it's absolutely a beautiful piece. Let's see if we can get that to focus on there. It doesn't look like it's gonna, but anyway, uh, two layered top and bottom. Beautiful, beautiful wood. I like the texture of it. He left, so, it, he didn't completely smooth it out. He left some of the grain in here. So when you kind of rub your fingers across it, you can feel a texture there, which is really, really nice. One of the things that I don't like, everybody always blames me because I don't find bad stuff in this gear that I review. And that's just because I love everything. Uh, not because I'm influenced or paid or compensated because we don't do reviews like that. Most of this stuff I'm reviewing, I'm buying myself or it's being sent to us at our request by, by vendors, um, you know, with no stipulation of a positive review. Right. So, um, but I'm going to try to focus on some things that I don't like. Some things that I don't like about this, the volume on it. Uh, you can't just, if you just click it, like if you just push it once like that, I don't know if you can see it back there. No, it's not focused. If you just push it like that, it doesn't do anything. You have to hold it for about two or not two or three seconds, maybe like one second before it starts to activate the volume mechanism. And it starts out really slow and then it starts ramping up its speed and increasing the volume. Uh, and so you kind of have to hold it down. So it kind of feels a little bit funky. It takes a long time to go from like, if you're rocking out all the way down to zero, <clears throat> um, you know, so that's one of the things that I, that I really didn't like about it. But other than that, there was nothing in this integrated amplifier that I felt like it's not worth the money or, you know, and I really do. Oh, here's another thing I don't like. Okay. I do not like, no, I can't say I do not like, I love the copper binding posts but they are 100% copper. So as you touch them, if you're like me, swapping out cables and gear and doing stuff all the time, they start to get that patina right on them. So they kind of start to look dirty like a penny. When you first get it, it's all super shiny and clean copper. And you're just like, oh my God, I'm in love with this thing. Uh, and then kind of as you use it, it kind of gets dingy. So get your Tarnex out and you might have to soak these things every once in a while. You can buy a replacement uh, binding posts on his website. I think they're like $125 a pair if I'm not mistaken. I talked specifically a second ago about it being labeled kind of pre, pre amp, pre out, uh, you know, ba uh, single ended outputs uh, on there. And I reached out to Peja um, at Audio and I asked him, hey, what are the, what are your thoughts about utilizing this as a pre amplifier? Uh, and I'm just going to read you the email directly from what he said, just so it's his words, not mine. So this is what he said when I asked him. I basically kind of said, hey, we love your thing here. Um, you know, what are the thoughts about uh, running it as a preamp? And he said, uh, thanks for writing, James. Uh, it's great that you like the A21. Hard not to like. Uh, he said, yes, you can use the A21 as a preamp straightforwardly. Uh, the pre-out is not meant and designed as an ultimate pre-amplifier. So I think what he's kind of saying is it's, it's not an ideal situation. It's not what the unit was designed for. Uh, but it employs nice Toshiba JFET buffers. And you will notice that the A21 input stage empl employs bipolar transistors. But I settled on JFETs on the preamp outs because I expected this output to be used mainly for subwoofer outs. And in my view, the JFET's base is somewhat better controlled uh, or simply more firm, which may be preferred uh, in this lowest end. So he's designing these things specifically uh, because it's functioning better if you're utilizing it as a sub out. And so for me, I was like, well, just market sub outs. But I don't, I don't know what the thought process there was in, in the design, but he's clearly telling us that he kind of designed that to be used for subwoofers. Um, he would, and he goes on to say also JFETs are somewhat more reliable, uh, which becomes handy, simple to use, uh, when you root the signal externally, uh, please note that the pre outs lack a, a balanced connection. And the only reason for this, uh, was that there was no more space for PCB mounted connectors. Um, so there's his kind of take directly from him himself, uh, on the reasoning and design and, and thoughts on the pre outs. Uh, of this integrated. Okay, so let's jump to scene two and I'll just walk you through uh, Paige's website real quick. Uh, here you can see he's got different DACs. Uh, if you go to his DACs, he's got the uh, Audio S5. I would love to get this in review, in for review. $2,100 for that, uh, uh, that DAC. Here is his amplifier. 
Uh, there's the audio A21. This is the one that we have, 100 watt output. Um, let's see, getting to some of the, sp uh, like we talked about, balance, fully balanced, differential. Uh, a lot of the, um, you know, technical marketing stuff in here. Uh, fully differential input stage. Uh, discrete circuit with global feedback. Uh, uh, unbalanced sources. Let's see, what else does he does he talk talk about? Oh, he talks about some of the different uh, five inputs in some friendly input impedance. Uh, a digitally controlled resistive network pentiometer chip with 63 steps of 1 dB. So that's that uh, attenuated volume. Uh, copper binding post, copper heat sink. Here's a picture of that heat sink I was talking about. That's right behind the binding binding post there. Uh, and, and they use all pure copper. I mean, this thing is beefy and heavy. Uh, and they, they talk here. I, I can't verify from, from ear, but uh, the copper heat sink does not only improve heat dissipation, but due to its mechanical and RF properties, it also improves the sonic performance. So I don't have one to compare with and without, so I can't verify that, but that's the claim. Uh, and then here's all of his kind of rundown, 10 amp power op amps, uh, three RCA combo XLR. There's the JFETs that he was talking about for the pre-outs, uh, six discrete zero feedback uh, regulated supplies, uh, separate transformer, secondary windings for each output stage, um, you know, basically operates as a dual mono, uh, mains DC blocker, high quality, he talks about the different parts that he uses, Texas Instruments, Toshiba, uh, ZTEC, uh, semiconductors, Panasonic, Nichicon, Elna, you know, uh, V-shaped carbon resistors, you know, all upper tier stuff that you're not going to see in kind of some of your more, probably your chi-fi stuff where they're just using, you know, 32 cent capacitors and resistors. Uh, tinned copper. This is this was really cool here. Tinned copper printed circuit board. No nickel here. So all tinned copper. Uh, let's see. Volume and balance control uh, and input sections are simply operated by a single knob. We talked about that. Uh, and so if you want to read a little bit more about, he's got all of his specifications here. Uh, you can check all this stuff out. He talks about the input impedance, uh, output power, basically 100 watt at 8 ohms to uh, 150 watts at 4 ohms, uh, 10 amp current, uh, frequency 20 to 100 kilohertz, uh, 0.06 uh, harmonic distortion, 36.7 uh, dB gain, uh, which is pretty good there. Uh, and, and yeah, so there he gives you some of the different gains and stuff like that. So if you want to look more into that stuff, please do. He gives you a bunch of information down here, all kinds of different papers on it. He's got the A20 as well, which is kind of the smaller amplifiers, 1200 bucks. You can check that guy out too. All right. Well, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that review, that discussion. If you were looking to get into some boutique uh, builders and manufacturers, make sure you check out Audio. Uh, and reach out to Pedro over there. It is a pretty significant wait to get those pieces. He does hand build them per order, um, but man, they are an absolutely magical piece. If you are looking for something that is absolute audiophile, nice analog vibe with good realness uh, overall throughout the, the frequency range, uh, some good bass, nice relaxed presentation, something that you can vibe out to, but not at a loss of detail or focus or clarity, uh, the Audio A21 may be for you. Uh, I know it certainly was for me. And uh, remember, we are the world's only 501c3 nonprofit audio reviewers. 100% of our proceeds go directly to help youth musical programs. Uh, $5,000 donated so far this year to charity. 100% of our proceeds get donated. So everything that we make, we donate out to charity. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that thanks button. Drop us a little bit of cup, cup of coffee money. Uh, and if you have not gone over to our Patreon, that is one of the best ways that you can support the work that we do. We take all of the Patreon money every month uh, and we put it into a pool. Uh, and then we buy gear to raffle off to even raise more money um, in, in our community. So if you want to be part of those raffles, part of that work, get in our Discord. Get over and check out our new website at abxaudiofiles.org uh, for all of the links and content and all of our stuff we're doing. Thank you for being here. Have a fantastic day.